Chris here for Tank Attack and welcome to the channel. And today I teach you how to read the analog voltage using the analog read command. So let's get started now. Today's lesson combines my previous Arduino video and we will use all that we learned so far to create a circuit and collect data from it. If you have not done so, make sure you watch the previous tutorial, especially the one on Ohm's law and serial port. As you can see, those are the ones I'm using here because it will be easier for you to follow today's video unless of course you know it and need just a refresh only now that we know how to do a circuit analysis in theory and how to troubleshoot let's start the fun part and build these circuits we will need a few parts for that like a breadboard i'm using this small one but if you have a bigger one it works as well no worry a one kilo ohm resistor you can use any resistor that you want it will be easier for you for troubleshooting to follow what i have a 220 ohm resistor but any will do and of course we will need the arduino and a computer oh and i almost forgot a few wires and a multimeter too yes <laughs> Anyway, once we got all this, let's put it all together. I'm starting by the 1K resistor, and the trick here is not to block the first row. You can put it in the first column, no problem. And I will space it, all right? I know I have a small board, so I just space it for it to be easy, all right? Then I will take the 220 ohm and match the last leg of the 1K resistor. And then I spread it once more to be easier for me to plug the wire after. Now I will plug the first leg of the 1K resistor into the Arduino and I will put this into the 5 volt rail which is here. Okay, so let's do that now like so and once this is done I change the camera like this you have a better view. And maybe I will tidy up a little bit too because uh, it's a little bit messy. You can see it's not centered and that. I cannot take it. Anyway, so now, <laughs> and it doesn't work. Okay, so now I will going to plug the ground because of course we have to finish the circuit and we can proceed by connecting the multimeter. If this wants to play nice, of course. Maybe I should use some blue type, says he, while uh, playing and arranging his multimeter on the table. <laughs> and for those who are not familiar with the multimeter, we will use the straight line, which is the direct current, the DC. We turn it and put it to 20. We also connect our lead accordingly to the Arduino, where we are moving over now, like so, in order to connect the lead with them to the Arduino, ground, as you see here, and to the power, the 5 volt, like so. There is a slight variant here because I cannot find my crocodile uh, clip. So I will uh, put this into those leads from the multimeter with those type of clip here. It's almost the same. Anyway, I think this one now is just a proof of concept actually. We are not after accuracy here, so let's connect now the positive from the multimeter to the 5 volt rail positive of the Arduino, like so. And we can now make the connection from the negative of the multimeter to the ground of the Arduino. You can see we have a reading as well once the connection is made. And yes, I am aware it should say 5 volt. This is due to the Arduino onboard regulator. And also, this is because I'm using El Chipo multimeter. That's why. This implies that the number we will get won't match with what we calculate earlier. We will still continue on through the projects. And you can see even the connection with the wire. It's so so. All right. So I try to fix it. This is the best we will get, I guess. So let's recap the connection. Here we are from the 5 volt to the breadboard through R1, through R2 and back to the ground. Now here, this from the positive R1 through the wire and to the multimeter positive here and from the negative R2 to the multimeter negative or if you prefer to the ground here until the multimeter lead negative. So now you will say, but Chris, how do I measure R1 or R2 only? Well, look at this, it's very simple. We take the wire here and put it in the connection from the positive R2 to the negative R2. Hence, we can take the measurement. So the current go from the Arduino through R1 and then from the lead R2 through R2 and back to the ground. And to measure R1, we simply have to move the positive R1 through the multimeter positive and the negative to the negative or R1. And then you can see we can measure R1 now. But we want to use the Arduino 
And in order to use the Arduino, we need to understand that we cannot measure with the pin we use until now, which are the digital pin. We need to use the analog pins. And those pins are situated here on the Arduino. What we can read with those pins can be found in the link here down below that I will leave for you. Or you can uh, pause and read whatever is on the screen right now. This is from the Arduino website, arduino.cc. And uh, you go to e-tutorial, built-in example, analog input. Now, back to the circuit, as we need to substitute the multimeter for the Arduino. In order to do the connection, we need to turn off the multimeter and modify the circuit to be compatible with the Arduino. So, let's start by removing the multimeter and the sensing wires, like so. Now that this is done, those are the parts that we need to keep. We still need a wire to connect for sensing. I will use the yellow, but this is only because it will be easier for us to see where it is plugged into. I will, for now, plug it into the junction of R1 and R2 and choose an analog pin. Not here, it doesn't really matter which pin we are using, as long as it is an analog one. I will use the A0. There, moving on to the sketch now. Once there, you can see that I renamed my uh, project with analog grid voltage, but feel free to do whatever you want. We will start here at the top and we create an integer, which is INT. We will call it read pin and the pin will be equal to A0 as we are reading data coming from the wire connected to A0, in turn reading from our breadboard. Don't forget your semicolon here. Then if we want to read this pin here, we will get the voltage, but we have to create this integer here, which we call V2. And for now, the value will be zero. Once more, don't forget the semicolon at the end. Then we create another integer. This one is for the delay. You remember, it's better not to use a constant here. That's why we create this integer. So I will call it del time, but you can call it whatever you want. Just make sure that it's something that has a meaning to you. Just don't call it XYZ or your pet's name or something like that. Then that's all for now for those variables. And we can go into the void setup. And uh, what do we do in our void setup? Yes, that's correct. We do a pin mode. And you can see the color is orange, means that we declare it correctly. And what do we do with this pin mode? We read the pin. And how this pin will be different, as you can see here, it's an input. And it is all in capital. I can show you. If you write it incorrectly, that's how it does. So once it turns blue, you know it's correct. Don't forget the semicolon. After that, we will start the serial port. So we do a serial dot begin with a board of 9600 and we put the semicolon. Then we go into the void loop and this is where things get interesting. You can see my V2 here, okay, I have to fill in with data. And how do we do that? It's simple. So in order to get V2, we do an analog read and we will do what? We will read the pin. And the read the pin means this, the integer that we declare here, which is equal to A0. We put, of course, the semicolon, don't forget that. We go to the serial dot print Ellen, if you remember, Ellen. <laughs> and then what do we want to print? We will print V2. And yes, we had the semicolon again. So at this point in the loop, what this is going to do. We are going to read from V2, huh? from the read pin, which is a zero. Then it is going to print, and then it's going to read it. Then it is going to print it, and then it's going to read it. But if you can imagine, we are just going to do that over and over again, very fast. So there might be a little problem here, as it's going to be reading and printing so quickly that we might not be able to see it. In fact, just let me download this to the Arduino, and let's see what this does. So let me Remove the delay first and upload this to the Arduino. We will see at least if our sketch is correct, which it is. <laughs> oh, good. And you can see here the small magnifying glass. When you hover over it, it says serial monitor. We click on this. So no comment here. That's why the delay is for. Let me close this, put back the delay, upload it back. And now what does this do? Ta-da! Now we can see. There is a problem, isn't it, here? Don't we think there is a problem? Yes, there is. It cannot be 160-ish volts, isn't it? And you are correct. So let me explain to you what's happening here. I already made a video on the same subject. 
which is the Arduino tutorial number 6. But in that video, we were looking at an 8-bit resolution. This time, it's a 10-bit resolution, which means we are dealing with the sampling rate of 1024. But if you remember in that video, I explained that since we count the zero, we are dealing with 1023 sampling numbers. And what this means to us is that we start at zero and the zero is zero volt. And the 1023 will be the five volt. Once again, it's because we are using an Arduino Uno. Now, let me show you what we do with those values, okay? We will take V2, it's equal at five over 1023, multiplied by read file. And what do I do with that? Well, let's go back to the Arduino RDE and I explain to you. Basically, what we have to do is to come in here and declare a new integer. So this new integer will be what we just find out about read var. And I'm not going to assign any value because we need to find out v2 and read val will help us to do that because actually read val is not the voltage. What do we do now? We simply have to go here and as I explained to you, read val it's the analog read. So we just have to replace that read val like so and now we can calculate v2. So how do we do that? We do v2 it's equal, you remember, I just show you, 5 over 1023, close the parenthesis, times read val. That's correct. Now, semicolon. So we will think that now we can send this to the Arduino. Matter of fact, we will do that. And we will think that this is correct. I can tell you it is not. We open the serial monitor and what do we see? Zero. Why is that zero? I ask you. Let's close this and let's look at the sketch. You can see that V2 is equal 0. But if we want to calculate it, we need to change that. And it's not only because here it's 0. It's also because those are full numbers. And this is how we declare it as an integer. So let's say it's 9.6. We won't be able to see it because the Arduino will round it as we put this as an integer. If we change this to a float, like so, all right, and here, since it's a float, we need to add a decimal point because it is a float. We can send this to the Arduino and we check. What do we see? There it is. We have it. Yes, success. <laughs> Let's double check with what we wanted to achieve and we can see that it's approximately the same. As usual, if you have any question, please leave a comment down below. That is it for today and just to let you know i started the patreon where if you want you can support me and again if you enjoy it you know what to do you can do your youtube things like if you want to subscribe you may as well or you can also press the bell icon if you want to be notified every time i post a new video however if you do not like this video simply leave a comment down below and tell me why it's so i will try to improve for you guys Stay safe and bye now!